Hello, so I am Mikey Kempling and this is my little vlog which I am trying to get going and I hope to do at least once a week and call it my writing journey for want of a better word. Sounds perhaps a little bit pretentious but you know um, there we are we can always change it later perhaps. And I am just going to have a bit of a chat about what I have been doing and how it's going and just generally sort of chart my progress in that way and hope to be not too dry and stuffy about it and uh, you know not too pretentious I hope. So um, here we are I've got my cup of tea. I'll, I'll make one for you in a minute you know I've been um, I've been sitting here waiting for the makeup person to come you know for ages and they don't seem to be turning up and you know the producer is a wall I don't know what's going on quite frankly how I work under these conditions I, I don't know you know I'm going to see my agent and and just you know go to a, a better house <laughs> go to, to migrate to a better blog vlog okay sorry my chair squeaks when I move nothing can be done about it I've tried I've tried I have many screwdrivers and other tools okay um so how am I getting on well some people who already know me will know about the darkening stone books and that's the main thing I'm working on at the moment and the third book the first well fourth book because the one of them's a novella but the third full-length novel is getting towards the end of its first draft which is kind of a, a very exciting time although it's always kind of a high five moment in a writer's life I think when they get to the end of a first draft but it is just that it's a first draft so I know there's a lot of work ahead of it before it ever sees a light of day. The second novel is waiting for the proofreader and it's taken a long time because it's not something I'm just putting out myself. The Darkling Stone novels come out through my publisher Book Trope and it's a kind of a team approach to um, to publishing and everybody works you know um, together to, to get the book properly edited and proofed and formatted and all those things. So the proofreader is hoping to get to it so towards the end of this month and then I think the cover's almost ready and after that it's pretty it takes about a month really because they format it all really nicely and um, produce everything nicely and so you're looking at sort of a month and a bit before it hits the shelves and if you're already a reader and a fan if, if you signed up for my newsletter the awkward squad or the tribe I have two sort of <laughs> select groups uh, the tribe is my advanced readers and other people who like to help out they'll get it first obviously that select group of people they'll, they'll get any uh, advanced reader copies and so on they, they go to them that sort of goes without saying and then the newsletter people will get sort of advanced notice because what I'll try and do I'll try and make sure the second novel comes out at, at a lower price I might do it on pre-order like I did with cheat code uh, my sci-fi cyberpunk thing I, you know I made sure there was a couple of weeks of pre-order at, at half price so that people who wanted to um, who were already fans were the people who got the best price if you see what I mean and then all the Johnny come lakelys who came along later will just have to you know stump up the dollars not that it's that expensive anyway but um, that's kind of my thinking at the moment and um, yeah that, that's going pretty well I'm pretty pleased with it it, it kind of uh, had a, had a long a long journey towards publication this third book it almost didn't happen I could have left it after the second full length novel um, the Darkening Stone books cover several time zones several periods in history and it sort of different chapters deal with different time zones and in the first book there was an extra thread set in 1920 and I decided to take that one out because it had just become a bit too complex there were just too many threads going and it was written and it was sitting there and I thought okay I'm going to use it and uh, I, I think a lot of writers I think are fairly instinctive hoarders and, and I advise you if you're if you are a writer <laughs> I don't see why you should be listening to this but um, this is more for my readers really but if you've got ideas and things jotted down always keep them because you never know when they might come in useful so I decided to add that in and that's, once my brain started going I, I thought well I, I'll sorry not add it in but to make a new book involving that thread and once my brain started going in all sorts of directions then um, then yeah it, it's going to be a, a full-length novel I just did a little edit there it's I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of editing for these vlogs because I think they're sort of you know fairly uh, 
natural kind of approach it works best but I suddenly realized that I'd started recording it without just checking that it actually worked and that the sound matched up and everything and it has, does seem to be working so we'll carry on so um, so that's where I am with that I I've started um, dictating my work but I discovered I can't redo really that properly without um, having a pretty good idea what I'm going to say so I'm at the moment going back to how I started funnily enough which is scribbling longhand but these are very rough very rough notes really snippets of dialogue little descriptive phrases that might occur to me and then I um, dictate that using the old dragon dictate stuff software into word and then I copy that into Scrivener and then I'm going to rewrite it in Scrivener and finally I'll polish it up and put it back into Word because editors like to work in Word anyway and I quite like to polish in Word. Um, I like to use the right tool for the right job and Word is very powerful and Scrivener is very powerful and they're both powerful in different ways so I use both. I use everything available to me. And it's interesting the dictation thing. I, my first as we were talking about my journey, my first attempt at writing this novel, which was many years ago, because it was quite a while before I finished it and even longer before it saw the light of day, because I wanted to get it good enough. And that is, I, I sat and wrote it longhand, the entire novel. Um, that was probably, including the 1920 thread, it was probably around 80,000 words, all scribbled in various notebooks and things, which I've still got. And then I thought, oh no, now I've got to sit and type it all up. And I tried some dictation software back then. A friend kindly gave me some um, some dictation software. It wasn't Dragon, it was another brand, a Philips one, I think. And it was hideous, it was absolutely useless. And now, these years later, the computers are so much more powerful and the software is more powerful and it's really good. It's actually pretty accurate, although it does make some quite interesting typos. Um, it's quite funny the things it comes out with occasionally as it, as it mishears you. And sometimes there's these strange sentences that you you look at them again and think, what the hell did I mean there? What was I trying to say? It's it's totally, you know, <laughs> totally um, off the wall. Whereas, you know, the average typo, you know, you might get the letters in the wrong order or something, but this actually puts different words in, so which can be quite mind-blowing. But on the whole, it's, it's very good. So that's what I'm rattling away with. Um, and I'll be rewriting that. We've got various things coming up. I think I've got a sale coming up in a few days for a dark assortment. I think that's going to be uh, it's a countdown sale in a few days. So later this month, watch out for that dark assortment um, horror stories or dark stories. Really, they're not kind of generic horror sort of suspense type stories. They will be, um, I think, 99 cents later this this um, month and 99p in the UK. Yes. So, you know, that's worth a shout, worth a look. Um, that's not, I don't really want this to be promotional, just the idea is to sort of talk about what I'm doing, and that is what I'm doing at the moment. And you have to think about these things now. I mean, when I started going back to the journey theme, writing this book longhand, I did what everybody did back then, was I queried agents, I sent to publishers, had some interest straight away, had some feedback quite as well which is unheard of really these days I think nobody will take stuff in their slush pile then um, but I had a couple of publishers you know say yes yeah, send us the thing and you know sit on it for a year because that's how traditional publishers work it's dreadfully slow and inefficient and um, you know then say oh it's not right for the age group or whatever I was pitching it at um, and it's tough it's a bit of a crapshoot the old traditional publishing model because you have to have everything just right you have to have everything aligned right and I think I pitched it as a YA book and they didn't see it as that and I'm not sure I do now and in fact most of my readers are adults pretty much all of them with the Darkening Stone books that it could be read by a young adult but I think on the whole that they're, they're, they're adults so you know I understand now that I was pitching it wrong all that time but there you go you live and learn and I'm happy for it to be published by Book Trope. It's, it's, it's nice. It's, they've done a nice job of it. The cover's great. The formatting's great. It's a good reader experience. It's thoroughly edited and it's been you know, edited and proofread and all that stuff. So it's really nice. Um, so yeah, that's probably quite long for a YouTube video as they go because people have attention spans of, uh, of a mayfly these days, I think. So... A lot of them are only about three minutes long, aren't they? 
Oh, am I insulting the audience there? I'm sure you haven't. I'm sure your attention span is massive and you could probably watch all the Lord of the Rings movies back to back without, you know, breaking a sweat. Um, it's good for you. <laughs> um, probably nobody's going to watch it. So there we are. OK, uh, I'll finish my cup of tea and edit those two little clips together. You won't be able to see the join. <laughs> I'm sure you will be able to see the join. And um, yeah, I think I will stop there. And um, thank you very much for watching, if you have been. And stay tuned. I'll try and uh, get the hang of this as I go, because that's the way to learn, isn't it? Just do it and see how it goes. All right. Well, take care. Thanks for popping by. I'll finish my cup of tea and um, see you hopefully next week. All being well. And I'm just recording this little bit. So <laughs> total disclosure, because I forgot to say all of my contact information and stuff. And you might actually want to know where to find me. So I'll try and put a, a box or something. Let's see if I, I can't, everything's weird when you're recording yourself. Let's say it's going to be there. And my site is MikeyCampling.com. And you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Mikey Campling. And there's a Facebook author page somewhere, which is something like author Mikey Campling or something like that. But the best way is MikeyCampling.com because there are links there to all my social media profiles. And let's face it, there are hundreds of the damn things, aren't they? You know, we can hardly keep track of them. There are some I'm sure I don't use that I've signed up for, but we probably all do that now, don't we? So um, that's the thing to do. MikeyCampling.com, pop by, say hello. Comments, welcome on the YouTube video or on the blog on my website. Well, I'll, I'll pop this up there. Plan is to make an audio version and from this and put it out as a podcast because podcasts are great. I'm learning loads about podcasts. I have a writing podcast if you are a writer rather than a reader or perhaps you're both. And that's called uh, Writing Talk Podcast and that website is writingtalkpodcast.com. So thank you very much and I will um, exit stage left or stage right, whatever, and hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.